Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. I would like to encourage everyone on my Facebook friends list, everyone in my social groups, and all of my listeners worldwide, please do me a favor. Hit that like button and share this video podcast with your friends, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. It's free. Help make this video podcast go viral by posting this link to your Facebook page, your Instagram page, and or on your Twitter page. This video podcast is available in three forms. Audio, video, and as a written text in order for us to reach our audience. On my YouTube channel, you can watch my latest video podcast. I provide direct links to our virtual store, my Amazon author page, our PayPal page, my Medium page, and our GoFundMe page under the About section. We look forward to having you on board with this, with us as we embrace upon this exciting project. If you are listening to this audio podcast on Anchor, just click on the YouTube icon to connect with my YouTube channel. In order to follow along with my presentation, I strongly recommend everyone on my Facebook friends list exchange emails with me so that I can email you everything I do online. I encourage all of my listeners to follow me on my Medium page. This is where I post my transcript so that you can read my full speech word for word or click on the audio version to hear my speech. I use this platform to interact with everyone on my friends list and everyone in my social groups by giving black business owners free airtime to promote their products and services. I give people in the faith community an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I give black authors and, and ordinary law buying citizens an opportunity to share their special talents and skills to my listeners from around the globe. After the show, I offer my guest speakers an incentive by teaching them how to create their own podcast and YouTube channel to help them earn extra revenue. I also assist people on my friends list with creating basic websites, finding college scholarships and grants, housing and legal services, all for free. I am not interested in writing and publishing more books, but rather producing quality black empowerment films and creating successful black businesses. I am not online to beg for donations. I want to exchange something of value. My thing is, if I am do going to ask for something, then I'm going to have a product or service behind it, like my revised book or my virtual store. This video podcast is an extension of the grassroots community activist movement. Over here, we promote critical thinking while discussing social issues throughout the diaspora and on the African continent until the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago materialize. It's my hope through this podcast and through my social groups, I can connect with other like-minded black people, African people, Afro-Caribbean people, Afro-Brazilian people, and others who will work with me directly and turn in my vision and plan for black America and Africa into a reality. Once we get this film project fully funded and made and get our Christian business up and running, then I would love to invite many of you to Chicago, Illinois to speak or preach during our live events. Through the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago, we will help pay for your travel and hotel expenses depending on our budget and sponsorship. We will also compensate you for your time and talent. Please mark your calendar for Saturday, February 25th, 2023. I would like to personally invite everyone on my Facebook friends list, everyone in my social groups, and all of my listeners from around the globe to participate in our next Facebook live event. Theme, Battle for Africa. Time, 2 p.m. through 4 p.m. American Central Time. 3 p.m. Canadian Time. 
8 p.m. West African time, 9 p.m. South African time, 10 p.m. East African time, and 8 p.m. UK time. Purpose, to educate black people, African immigrants, Afro-Caribbeans, Afro-Brazilians, and others who are serious about solving black issues in America, solving American, African issues on the continent and throughout the diaspora, as well as to raise funds for our film project, quote, Hood Liberator, Made in Chicago, The War Against Willie Lynch Begins. We're using a spiritual perspective about solving these social issues in this day and age. If you would like to be on the, the panel, just send me a message to my Facebook inbox for additional information. This time I would use my smartphone and my laptop to host my virtual conference through Facebook Live. If you believe you won't be able to participate, no worries, then please share my Facebook Live event page with all of your friends on all of the social media you are on and leave a public comment about the topic on my YouTube page and on my Facebook page. This will help get the ball rolling. Gracam is much more than me trying to just sell a book. Gracam is a new is the new civil rights movement 2.0. Over here our goal is to promote black economic empowerment and to solve social issues through technology in the 21st century. We're offering an experience. We will host our virtual conference every last Saturday of the month until we are able to raise $200,000 in order for me to hire a production company along with a graphic designer who will create a movie trailer and movie poster for our film project. I will seek an additional $300,000 to make sure we make a quality black environment film. I will hire an assistant director and assistant producer along with a film crew. In addition, I plan on hiring an information technologist to create a streaming service where we can show all of our future films there. I created a GoFundMe page last April as a crowdfunding source so that everyone knows exactly where the funds will be going. We will be using our GoFundMe page as an indicator of our progress. So far, out of 1,660 people on my Facebook friends list, only three people have donated to our film project. And this is why it's taken me so long to get things done. I have 330 subscribers on my YouTube page, but if you look under the About section, it says I have 11,616 views. I am encouraging everyone on my Facebook friends list, everyone on my in my social groups, and all of my listeners from around the globe. Please subscribe to my YouTube page and share my page with all of your friends on all of the social media you are on. And leave a public comment about the about the topic in the comment section on my YouTube page and on my Facebook page. This will help get the ball rolling. Those of you who will donate to our film project through our GoFundMe page and display your name and the amount you are contributing, we will mention you in our film credits. In addition, everyone who contributes to our film project will earn cool points to our future live events at Archive Chicago to, sh to show our appreciation. The best thing is that we will own the property and host unlimited events as well as we want. We want, we will reach out to black owned food vendors and caterers to give them shine for their business. We will be community oriented. I also encourage everyone on my friends list, everyone in my social groups and all of my listeners worldwide to help me get my revised book on the bestsellers list so that way the world would take our cause serious. This is 100% grassroots. We are not getting any funding from the government or major corporation because our focus is on strengthening the black family while improving the African American community starting in Chicago. Instructions on how to participate on the show. First, watch my video podcast. This is called Side A. After I finish my presentation, then I will open up the phone lines through Facebook Messenger. This is called Side B. You can interact with me in real time either by voice call, by clicking on the phone icon, or by video call, by clicking on the camera icon. Today's topic of discussion 
Mac America Wake Up Call, the need to separate from the enemy within. Today we're going to discuss the murder of Tyree Nichols. I'm going to try my best to explain why some black people choose to harm other black people and how this links to racism in America. How many of you have been following this case? I watched the video. It was sickening. To every good officer who may be listening, I salute you. Based on what I seen in the video, it appears that those road cops violated the law. On this video podcast, we're trying to build an independent black media, create a black empowerment film, and the proceeds from the film create a black multi-purpose facility which will become the heart of the black community starting in Chicago, if given a chance. Because it's been 31 years, y'all. All of these police training techniques done in America was created by the white supremacist financial elites. These so-called black men were serving a system that was built on white supremacy before the American Constitution was created. This system was not designed to serve and protect everybody. It was designed to protect the rich from the poor. And on a racial level, it was designed to protect white people from black people. Have anybody heard of the term overseer? An overseer is a person who supervises or manages others. For example, during American slavery, if a slave got out of hand on those plantation, Massa would call the overseer to beat the slave in front of other slaves to use the person being punished as an example of what would happen to them if they got out of line, like not picking enough cotton. Over here, I'd rather focus on the real enemy to black people, that is sellouts, degenerates, hardened criminals, urban terrorists, pedophiles, and off-code Negroes. I refuse to unite with anyone who behave like those so-called brothers in the video. Getting back to the case, I did not see any evidence that Tyree Nichols was not complying. I felt that this situation went beyond policy. Part of the video where the white officer said, quote, I hope they stop his quote. As police officers, they are supposed to intervene in, in, in a commission of, of a crime. That officer should also be charged. Those cops are in a powerful position to uphold the law, but they decided to degrade him by beating him to death. Notice the people who are getting punished, they are the ones who are reckless. When they are caught red-handed, they are no longer useful to the system. From the political from the criminal justice system, the educational system, and the healthcare system are all designed to destroy melanated people in America. We're not equally outraged when urban terrorists kill our inner city children. We're not outraged over record labels who are making millions of dollars from drill music which glorify the killing of other black youth. I'm always outraged when an innocent black person is killed over senseless violence. What is the difference about Tyree Nichols murdering? That's then all of the other murders that's happening in our neighborhoods every week. How come black America can get upset about Tyree Nichols murder but show no interest about all of the uh, all of our inner city youth that are that was killed the past week. We as black people must lead the conversation that matters to black people. Instead of taking our cues from mainstream media like CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, and Fox News. I've been telling black America for years that we are being targeted from Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, Walter Scott, Oscar Grant, Philando Castell, um, Arlington Sterling, Jalen Walker, Laquan McDonald, Freddie Gray, 
Patrick Lo Loyola, Kenning Anderson, Sandra Bland, Rakia Boyd, George Floyd, and many, many more. Just, just to name a few. Those same road cops are no different than the sellouts who were on the, those plantations during American slavery. We have black people in our neighborhoods who assist the white supremacist financial elites. What I have been sharing with black America for the past 31 years is that we need to get back to basic family structure and building up our community again. So many of our people have become Americanized, meaning they care less about the community or helping our black youth. They have embraced cultural assimilation and social integration. The mainstream media only focus on Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream speech, but does not promote the last two years of his life pushing for reparation, specifically for descendants of American slaves slash foundational black Americans. This is why I am online to do my part as much as I can to reach our youth in America, Africa, the Caribbean, and Brazil. My question is, where is the white equivalent of Tyree Nichols? My question is, where is the Asian equivalent of Rodney King? My question is, where is the Latino equivalent of George, George Floyd? If this was just American policing, then everybody would receive the same treatment. Everyone talks about the white flight during the 70s, but they don't talk about the white flight back to the cities in the 21st century. It's obvious what the white supremacist financial elites is doing in Chicago. They are rebuilding the city while increasing the rent and property tax. This means poor blacks will be priced out. This is also happening in New York City and other major cities across America. The mainstream media talks about urban violence in Chicago, but nothing about urban gentrification of black neighborhoods. The white supremacist financial elites are giving illegal Latino immigrants free health care, free education, and job opportunities that are not they are not supposed to have. It's against the law for them to work be working in America without having a work visa. The mayor and the Biden administration is turning a blind eye to these issues while police officers are beating down black drivers for speeding. See the double standard? These people are breaking the law. Why law enforcement is not arresting them? What happened to asset forfeiture laws? For example, I found a new, new article entitled, quote, Two South Suburban Police Officers Indicted for Extortion theft during traffic stops, unquote. In Phoenix, Illinois, two crooked cops got prosecuted for shaking down local drug dealers. I provide the video clip on my medium transcript under show and proof. Malcolm X's prophecy is now coming to pass. He said they can abandon their schools and their houses, but they cannot abandon their jobs, which is their economy. The strat strategy that the white supremacist financial elites are using is to withhold resources from the black community. Now, the Biden administration is allowing illegal Latino immigrants to flood the border. They are, are also bringing over Afghan refugees and Ukrainian refugees to prevent black people from inherit, inheriting the land. I keep telling black America, you have two choices, either embrace annihilation or em or embrace survival. I will only work with those who want to survive and those who will heed my advice. If black America continue to ignore my plan and vision, then we will fail our children and they will be worse off. Mark my words. As I have said in my revised book, we are under a system in America that deprives black people. On this video podcast, we are trying to build some things for the low-income African-American community, but it takes capital to start a business, ladies and gentlemen. All I have is my revised book and my virtual store, yet I have little to no support. This is why I'm online. This is why my film project is my last attempt to try to do something positive for my racial group here in America. 
African immigrants in America, must I remind you that it was African Americans who fought for you all to come to this country. I need your help in getting our film project fully funded and made so that I can bring the diaspora to your country so that we can make our presence known there and set up a chapter in 10 African nations, beginning with South Africa. On this podcast, we go deeper into the issues so that everyone can be on the same page. The murder of Tyree Nichols was 100% white supremacy because it was created by the white supremacist financial elite. They created that police unit called Scorpion. These subunits within the police departments are always used to subjugate and and suppress the low-income African-American community. Because they're not targeting the, um, I would say, the middle-class African-American community or the upper-class African-American community. When you watch the video of those dudes beating Tyree, they seemed comfortable doing it on camera. They were high-fiving each other. Here are some historical facts I would like to share with you. After the assassination of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., for one week, cities across the United States of America was on fire because our grandparents had enough of being abused and mistreated in this country. President Lyndon Lyndon B. Johnson passed the Civil Rights Bill in 1968. Then the white supremacist financial elites decided to push back by creating a document called, quote, the Crime Control and Safe Streets Act, unquote. I provide the PDF link on my medium transcript under show and proof. They also started talking about the war on crime, which was, co- was what, which was code word for war on blacks. They cre- created that bill in order to incentivize different states to create crime units. These crime units were designed to oppress black society. As I mentioned in my revised book, the white supremacist financial elites decided decided to allow the black middle class to live in the suburbs because of, um, I would say, integration. Then they decided to flood the black ghettos with drugs, guns, and liquor stores, which I call perfect genocide. Two things changed policing in the United States of America. The first thing was the New Hall Massacre in 1970, which created the Fear for My Life Doctrine. And the second thing was the murder of an officer in Queens, New York. Local governments start, started mater- militarizing the police from being community-based to to state weapon base. When you are dealing with the police, you're no longer dealing with a beat cop. What we have today is Robocop. I found a document which discussed a crime unit in Detroit called Stress, which stood for Stop the Robberies, Enjoy Safe Streets. This was a specialized tactical unit In L.A., they had the crash unit. In Atlanta, they had the red dog unit. Notice, the mainstream media is not talking about all of this money being allocated to fund these black, these anti-black organizations. We have to get into a better position so that we can control our economic base And that's what I've been trying to do for the past 31 years. We need to expose who is preventing the resources from flowing into our communities, ladies and gentlemen. We have too many off-code Negroes running interference for the white supremacist financial elites and will harm or kill us in a heartbeat for massa. If we are going to remain in America, then we must pull our resources together just like they did during Black Wall Street, and we must keep, uh, keep our culture. The mainstream media was trying to influence black people to riot. I am glad they did not take the bait. 
we are going to have to build the Kai of Chicago. It's either now or never. This organization is for black people, African immigrants, Afro-Caribbeans, Afro-Brazilians, and others. We are independent, we're not, we're nonpartisan, and we're not affiliated affiliated with anyone. Our first line of business is to get our film project fully funded and made. Also help get my revised book on the bestsellers list so that the world would take our call serious. If I am unable to get this Christian business up and running in America, then I am unable to come to Africa. Because I'm on a shoestring budget. I mean, it is what it is. We will take the lead in teaching our black youth how to handle a police encounter in the correct way. We have to understand when we get pulled over by law enforcement, follow the commands given to you. That's the first step for survival. The police have the authority. They have weapons given to them by the state to enforce the laws how they see fit. I don't want to keep seeing our young people harmed or killed in these police encounters. Not all police officers are road cops. It's a different scenario for black people than for white people. In America, black people as a collective are treated as fourth and fifth class citizens because not enough like-minded black people want to obtain power and build black institutions like me. The black America would study the Dred Scott case. It clearly tells you how black people should be treated in America. Also, also states in their constitution that black people are considered three, three-fifths human. When we see white officers flat facing the same situation, the white community creates a GoFundMe page to support Blue Lives Matter. But when black officers are in trouble with the public, there is no GoFundMe page from the white community. In America, racism is real. Too many black people are in denial. Every 25 years, the, the right to vote only applies to black people, no one else. We can't get away with what white people can get away with. In any encounter with the police, you need to know how to respond to those who are, are threatening your life so that you can Defuse the situation in order to in order to survive that encounter. This is what we will teach our young black men and young black women in Grakai of Chicago. In addition, we will teach our members and students emotional intelligence, create a standard rite of passage, offer political education, moral ethnic, ethnic code of conduct. Truth be told, our youth are not being trained on how to deal with road cops and it's costing them their life. If you listen to the police and comply, then you won't go to jail and you won't get abused. I've been trying to get black America to support my Christian business based on my Amazon sales. My book is barely selling. I don't want to get bogged down with American issues. I want to bring my vision and plan to Africa on the African continent and work with Africans that want more out of life. But I need to get it started in America first for credibility. If black America was serious about solving our social issues in America, then they would have embraced my vision and plan 11 years ago. People on my friends list People in my social groups and all of my listeners across the United States of America would have spread my message of no anti-black hate crime bill and reparation, then no vote for both political parties. It does not matter how bad I want to get this business up and running. With their support from the black grassroots and the global African family, all I can do is pray and continue to make video podcasts. The moral of this story is comply and listen to the police when you have interactions with them. This is how you avoid police altercations. Please leave a public comment about the topic in the comment section on my YouTube page and on my Facebook page. Most of all, share this video podcast with your friends on all social sites you are on. This will help get the ball rolling.
Again, ladies and gentlemen, um, it takes capital to start a business. All I have is my revised book, my virtual store, and now I'm trying to do a film project. That's all I have. I have something positive to offer um, black society. But it's people, and I, I'm going to go there, it's people that's in my social groups that's haters. Um, it's a lot of um, passive spectators. They just want to sit around and just, you know, just want to be on there just to be seen. Those kind of people, um, we're just going to leave them behind. I want to, um, I'm going to direct this film project myself, meaning, that, hey, this is my story. I'm going to be out there in the field. I'm going to direct this film. But again, I'm not going to sit up here and play like I can do everything. That's how come I'm trying to uh, raise 200000 so that way, um, people can take us serious, and that's going to help get the ball rolling. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I would say people from my African group, Grakai of Africa, I understand that you're living um, from hand to mouth, but you got a part to play in this as well. Encourage your family and friends from your country that lives abroad, that lives in Canada, Europe, or in the United States. Tell them about me. Encourage them to first um, donate to our film project and also encourage them to uh, purchase my revised book on my Amazon page. And they can find and tell them how they can find that. You tell them to. Um, Go to my uh, YouTube page. And let's say, for example, they don't know how to go to my YouTube page. What you would do is just encourage them to put in my full name on YouTube. So tell them his name is Emmanuel Barbie. That's E-M-M-A-N-U-E-L. Last name B-A-R-B-E-E. -E. Take my full name um, on YouTube and my videos will pop up. Tell them to hit the subscribe button. And then... From there, um, tell them to go to the about, the about section on, on my YouTube uh, page. And when they do that, they'll see all the links on from my Facebook uh, page. Um, they'll see the link to my Amazon author page, our GoFundMe page, our... Um, virtual store, they'll see that on there as well. So they have access to all of that. We have to use this technology that um, I would say that God has blessed us with. And over here we want to use that technology wisely. Um, again, I don't want to die in America. I want to bring my talents and skills to the African continent. But unfortunately, uh, I lack two things. I lack the manpower and I lack the capital. And so this is where you guys come in. People that are part of my African group, I need you to step up if you're serious about me bringing the diaspora to your country and to meet me in person. Do your part. Those of you that's just waiting for me to... Um, make it big and all that stuff and want to say congratulations. I don't want to hear from you. I'm going to treat you the same way you treated me. I'm going to ignore you. I've been on Facebook um, going on 19 years. I'm not doing this for my health, uh, you all. This stuff is serious. Our people are being slaughtered. Not just in the inner cities, but all over. You know, um, in the streets, um, outside of the inner cities. So it's, it's just horrible. But um, with that being said, thank you all for listening to um, my presentation. 
And what I will do, I'll wait around for about 15 minutes. If I don't hear from anyone, then we're going to uh, call it a day. But still, leave a public comment in the comment section below this um, video podcast about the topic. And again, please share my information. This is all I'm asking you all to do. Those of you that can afford to purchase my book, book cool. My book is, um, the ebook is available on my Amazon author page for $9.99. The self cover book is available for $15 plus shipping and handling. All I ask you to do is read my story for yourself. If you feel led about being a part of this organization, I would love to hear from you. Those that disagree, then uh, just keep it moving. But that's this is what I'm called to do. I'm doing the best that I can with the resources that I have. Um, and again, all the black churches here in the city of Chicago, they want to overlook me and stuff like that because, um, you know, this is a grassroots organization. We're small. But we're not going to um, sit up here and, um, I would say, um, partner with people that's corrupt and all that kind of stuff, you know, we got to build this stuff from the ground up. And those of you who work with me will go down in history with me and Sister Renee, if you're serious. Okay, so with that being said, phone lines are now open. 